What's going on guys, Brian's here. Let's recap a trade opportunity that took place on Tuesday, November 12th, 2024 on the SPX. I have the key gamma exposure strikes marked off on my chart. At 12.45 p.m. Eastern time, I shared within the Quant Trading app Discord that I think if the SPX gets down to 960, I think it'd be worth a zero DTE lotto back up to 975 or 980. That came straight from a glance at this gamma exposure profile. This is a timestamp right here of what I was looking at. And shortly right after I shared this message, the market actually ended up dropping straight down to that level and then bounced. I'm planning on sharing some of the thoughts that crossed my mind regarding why I thought this was a good trade opportunity. We'll also take a look at some advanced metrics like the Quant Trading App proprietary trade engine right here. As this graph in combination with gamma exposure is a tremendous edge in my opinion. I am the developer of this and I try to build tools that I think are quintessential to day traders, especially if you trade the SPX. This is my dashboard as I like to call it, which is just a display of one of my monitors that has some of the market internals as well as the futures next to the SPX with the SPY and then the VIX over here. I put an arrow on the charts regarding when I shared that comment within the Quant Trading App Discord. Let's actually just change the VIX to a three minute time frame just to make it match exactly what we have here on the SPY because the VIX was actually one of the key reasons regarding why I thought thought this would have been a good trade opportunity. Before we jump back to the SPX, I want to just maximize the SPY for a second here. And I want to point something out. At this point in time, why would I even be thinking about the markets going up when clearly we just had a breakdown right here? I will often sit on the sidelines as I see the market dropping. Majority of the time, if I see a bearish setup, I will do nothing about it. I will rather use that time to start thinking where will the selling pressure stop and when will the markets reverse. The markets, as history has shown us 100% of the time, will always bounce, at least according to the history of the market. In other words, we have never seen the S&P 500 go down to zero and stay there. In other words, that means we will always have a bounce. And as a trader such as myself that likes to take trades that have a high probability of success, that right there gives me an edge. Even if we are in a bear market, I'm still going to wait to see where is there an opportunity that the markets will reverse and bounce. So at this point in time, the SPX was around 975. There was enough context and enough clues to lead me to think that we were going down to 960, but I opted out of taking that short trade and I waited patiently right here before deciding to go long. 980 to me was a good strike or a good target and I will explain why a little bit later in this video. So let's start by first something that's pretty important. Why 960? What was I thinking? What did I see in that gamma exposure profile? And quite frankly, what did I notice on the chart? Let's take a look back here a few days ago, which was last week, Thursday, and let's take a look at this consolidation here. One of my largest videos has been on supply and demand. It is a concept that is important and not something you want to throw away as a trader. Supply and demand is always there. This was a zone last week. The markets broke out, came back, retested this zone before it pushed higher. So this zone is very obvious on the chart. I'll leave a link in the description down below to my volume profile playlist that contains my videos on supply and demand. I haven't done any specific videos over the past couple years on the subject matter, as I think that playlist pretty much summarized everything that a trader would need to know to get started looking at supply and demand. I don't draw these levels in these zones on my charts. As I have emphasized a couple years ago, those videos were just to help beginners get started with looking for supply and demand using the volume profile. I can just look at this naked chart without anything on here and see that this is obviously a zone that's pretty important just based on price action. The market pushed up, it went higher, it retraced, and then we went higher. The same thing, I only drew these levels on this chart just to explain for this video. The red levels are the negative gamma exposure levels, and then this green level up here is the positive gamma exposure level for the day. So this is the gamma exposure graph in which we are analyzing as, as that is the one that I shared at the time. 
which is the same one right here. I'm just clicking this link and then it's bringing it up right here so you guys can see. So the 970 strike and the 980 strike, those are the two solid red levels that we see on my chart. This would be the highest positive gamma strike, which is a 6,000 strike, and that's why this is green right here. Now, 960 caught my attention be because I like to think of things in terms of a group or a huge block. This is the block that has majority of all the negative gamma exposure. As we can see, these are all the strikes that have a lot of negative gamma exposure. Once we pass here, it drops or it rolls off. I generally call this a negative gamma exposure cliff, but I have all sorts of arbitrary names for these things. You can call it whatever makes sense to you. The next thing that stood out to me is if you guys will notice, this is the put volume behind it right here. So that light orange color back there is the put volume for each of these strikes. The exact number is the correlation that we see on this y-axis. So in other words, this strike price right here had about 28,000 in volume. So the 990 strike had that much volume. The 6,000 strike had almost 25,000 in volume for puts. The calls had over 45,000 in volume and so forth. So it's very easy to interpret or read. This is the strike price right here that had the last spike in volume so spike here spike here and obviously it is behind the net gex levels but we can just tell and we can see it right here with these curves so i took note of those are the strikes that have a lot of volume this strike had a decent amount of volume at 950 but the net negative gex just dropped at this level so I interpreted this as the cutoff point for the time being. Now I've seen similar gamma exposure profiles and then I know a level like 970 is generally not going to hold, which is why I didn't say 970. I said 960 because I've seen this play out a lot before. And then also the overall context is important. If we take a look at the SPY or we take a look at some of the other tickers, price action is king. Everything else is secondary. It's all about price and what's happening that you see on your chart down here with volume. This is a day in which the market is trending down and nothing about this chart looked quote unquote bullish. We had also just broken a support level intraday. This type of slow grind down all day without seeing any aggressive indication of selling with enough experience and screen time you'll be able to discern or decipher momentum intuitively this does not look like a day in which there is aggressive momentum the market is trending down but nothing about this seemed aggressive i would argue until this level cracked once it cracked we can see the acceleration in price but look at exactly when the signs of high volume started happening for the day Obviously, there was this spike here earlier in the session, but for the most part, everything was pretty flat and muted until we got down to this area. What was strange to me was the VIX itself. This is the VIX, and it just looked pretty nonchalant all morning. The markets was declining all morning long. The same thing with the ADV was declining all morning long. The VIX should have been moving up all day. Instead, it was just up and down, up and down, up and down. Now, granted, the VIX is back at the 15 level, so this is so it's going to trade differently from when it was at 20 or above. As one can argue, it has returned to the mean, so it's not going to be a direct correlation with exactly what's going on with the SPY, but I still found it strange that on a steady trending day down, the VIX had no indication of any type of trending up. Once we cracked, we did see the acceleration in the VIX, but then it just flopped and came right back down. At this point in time, obviously, there was no way to know what was going to happen with the VIX. But once the SPY accelerated in selling and it broke down, the VIX did have a little bit of its spike, but nothing about this seemed scary. As we zoom out and we just take a look at this, this just looks like the VIX has fallen asleep over the past few trading days. Another confluence was our tick. The tick right here, which is another market internal, sold right off to another extended strike. These are levels I've shared before in this channel. You can plot these out on your tick chart. This is how you access the tick on TOS. I've had these same levels up on the chart for over four years now, and they work like a charm if you're just looking for one extra reason to take your intraday scalp or your intraday trade. Like everything else in the market, it's not perfect, but if you already have some sort of a plan and then you see the VIX hitting exactly at a key level, just when you had a level that was premeditated like 960, you can just add that to your list as an extra reason regarding why you took the trade. Now this is a little bit of a twist when it comes to this graph, but it is something that is a little bit of an edge. 
it was also strange that there was very little call volume down here also. This is not always needed for this trade idea, but I did take note of this. It just looked so lopsided to this side with all this put volume and there's no call volume. There's nothing really happening, no activity down here. That was one of the reasons that led me to believe that the market was going to want to return back to 980. 980 was a strike price that had a decent amount of negative gamma exposure. The market is generally going to want to close above these negative gamma exposure levels, especially when we're in a net positive gamma environment the gamma exposure right now is negative and for the zero dt it's negative which is why it's indicated as this color red 6,000 at the time did seem like it would be out of reach considering there was only a few more hours left in the trading day. So for a trader to think the market would drop down to 960 and then return all the way up to 6,000, I think that would have been a little bit of a stretch. So I was a little bit more conservative in saying if the market was to drop down to 960, a good lotto would be to target it back up to 980. That means any higher that it went than 980 is just a bonus. In this case, it went 20 points in the money, which is amazing. There was a 10 point scalp that had instant gratification. I didn't plan on the SPX dropping 15 points right after I shared this, but it ended up happening. This is more so something I thought that was going to take 30 minutes, maybe even an hour to actually manifest. I thought the market was going to consolidate a little bit longer or continue to have that slow decline down to the 960 level and then have a sharp bounce right back up. But in this case here, it had the quick drop and then it had the bounce that happened instantly so that was amazing and there were so many different ways to capitalize off of the opportunity obviously i trade es options i also trade spx options i trade spy options i trade a little bit of everything i don't know if there's much to learn regarding exactly these positions here but i think this one is pretty interesting here this is the 980 call for reference it was up over 850 percent the option itself on the zero dte was under two bucks right at almost the perfect entry two dollar entry almost twenty dollar exit but this is exactly as i shared it as i thought this was the perfect place to actually exit the trade as the spx was hitting six thousand this was also the point of control on the es at the time and then look at that, the tick hit the exhaustion on the upside here. And this is a week to date point of control, by the way. So since the futures market opened at 6 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday, Monday, and all of Tuesday, a sharp rally like that right into the point of control is always going to be a good exit in my book, especially when we have confluence with the gamma exposure strike. The SPY at the same time was hitting the two day anchored VWAP. So as we take a look at these three confluences, it should make your decision making much easier as a trader. Point of control, high gamma exposure strike, two day anchored VWAP. One, two, three solid reasons. Take your profit, especially if you're long from anywhere down here. It's relatively simple. I thought it was a neat trade, especially how fast it all worked out. And then we have the QQQ, which was also confluence as it had hit the absolute gamma strike for the Friday expiration. Volume came in, so that just added an extra edge right there. I was just highlighting the confluences for the other traders in QTA in case they don't catch this video. We can see here again, just sharing what I was thinking. The tick, the same thing that I found was weird with the uh, IV all day there on the VIX, using that as a proxy for implied volatility. But for the most part, it all came from this right there. And then we can wrap this video on the SPX trade engine. I took note of the fact that if the market was to sell off, we can see that this was the one sigma range. Just made it full screen for you guys here. So as I was taking a look at this, the market was at max pain, but that didn't contribute much to my reasoning as there was no additional confluence regarding the max pain level. So I just saw it as any other standard level. 960 was past the one sigma range for the SPX. By the way, this is something for Quant Trading App Gold members. I've shared this part of QTA on this YouTube channel before. If you don't understand everything that I'm covering on this video, I recommend you ask some questions in the QTA Discord. As I'm coming around to the conclusion of this video, and I'm just trying to point out very quickly some of the things in which I was looking at. So we had the one sigma range and we can see that 960 was past the one sigma range, which I thought would have been weird. And I didn't think the market would close at that level just because I couldn't see enough of a reason to think we're going to close outside of the one sigma range. Usually if the market closes outside of the one sigma range up or down, there's usually some sort of a catalyst. There's usually aggressive volume. There's usually high net negative gamma exposure strikes past the one sigma ranges, or there's just more momentum overall in the market. In other words, it's selling off 
quicker or it's flying faster than the way the market was trading today. So that meant anything below 960 was going to be a gift in my opinion. Now 980 also stood out to me because as we can see it is the one sigma close. So this is QTA just letting us know on this particular day based on all of the data and the information. Generally this is what we will see the markets like to close around. So in other words if we're at 960 and I don't see enough reasons for the markets to close down that low. I'm just going to target where I think it wants to close based on the data that it's saying it closes most of the time. At this point the market is at 975 but just from taking a glance at this. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but there's enough context and there's enough information. And this just comes from looking at a couple graphs. As they say, a pitch is worth a thousand words. I can take a glance at this and just say, oh, so the market's here right now. If we get down here, it probably should close around here. There's enough information to draw it maybe up to 6,000. As you guys in QTA know, the power strike is extremely significant or extremely powerful, especially when it lines up with the absolute gamma strike. And we see this candy cane or this dashed color right here. It's also the high highest positive gamma strike as we know. So a lot of confluence around 6,000, which is pretty obvious because it is a 6,000 strike. But when all these things are aligning, we know that this is also going to act as some sort of a magnet. So even if you're not targeting 6,000, you want to see the magnet higher than the strike price in which you will be targeting. So it all becomes premeditated and the market plays out exactly in which the way you can expect it to move. We go down to here and then we bounce immediately and then we go up to here and then it pulls back. It ends up closing at 984. So pretty much right at 980, which is where or which is within the range in which it was expecting to close. Isn't that amazing? I think it is, which is why I decided to do this video. It's very late right now. I have an extremely long next few days ahead of me, but I just felt compelled to record this video, release it on YouTube. As this information, I think is pretty neat. Those of you within QTA are already aware of most of this, but in case you are in QTA and you're not aware of this, hopefully this video can help you. It's not often I share these types of lotto plays, but generally whenever I do, my track record is pretty good. I even have to remind myself this. I think if I'm sharing a lotto for you guys within QTA, it probably means it's a great trade and I should probably size up in it myself or or pay even more attention as I essentially opened my position and then I moved on with the day. I actually was recording some other content and I came back and I saw how great everything was working out and I started sharing the screenshots just to let you guys know what I was thinking. But this type of trade opportunity, even with a small account, can two, three, sometimes even five X your account, meaning if you have like a $2,000 account and you put three or $400 in a trade like this and it actually works out for you, you're getting 800% return for the day, that will double your account. And I think what's important here is the risk was not that high and the trade worked out instantly. You didn't even have to hold any type of pain, which is about as much of a gift as a day trader can ask for. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below. Like it, share it if you learned something. Link is in the description to learn more about Quant Trading App if you're interested. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.